Hello, everyone. This is episode three of the Steel Blue Video Podcast. Going to talk about some movies today, some of my recent watches, and answer some home theater questions from you all that I picked up from the comments section in some of my past videos. And most of those I've already answered, but for those who may not have read through those comments, I want to try to hit on a few. So let's start with some of those. First up, how are my seats and how are they holding up over time? So the chairs have been in the home theater and in use for over two years now, and they are looking just fine. Zero issues, zero signs of wear. The electronics work perfect. The leather is not worn. I sit in here for hours some days. The cushions are still supportive, and we're pretty mindful to take care when we're in this room. So we're not jumping around on the seats. We're not wearing rough, heavy denim pants or rubbing our like hard rubber shoes on the leather, regardless of how premium the seats are, if you're doing all that, at some point the seats will show signs of wear. So uh, as long as you're not diving into the seats or regularly rubbing something rough against the leather, with normal usage, they should hold up just fine. And that goes for both my Seatcraft and my Valencia seats. Just a few months ago, I posted my top 10 home theater movies. So if you have a moment, take a look at that video. There's a link in the description below for that. I mentioned that because I want to revisit the video that is my personal favorite home theater movie, which is Godzilla King of Monsters. Now, this may not be everyone's favorite, but it is mine. And I just want to give this movie a little added love and attention because this is why I have a home theater. This is one of the movies that makes this home theater worth it all. Movies like this, when I think about best home theater movies, this comes to mind first. For me, it's about audio quality, video quality, but also how much I enjoyed the movie. Sure, there are movies that are better from a strictly audio and or video perspective, but when I think of best home theater movies, I think about the total package, the entire experience. Godzilla vs. Kong, for example, from a strictly audio and video perspective, I think is better than Godzilla King of Monsters. In fact, there are a number of movies better in terms of a strictly audio and video experience. And I did a video on those. If you will take a look at that video, I have a link for that in the description section below. But those don't account for how good or bad the movie itself is. But Godzilla King of Monsters, for me, has it all. This is the kind of movie that has to be watched in a theater to experience this movie the way it should. Turn off the lights, a system of speakers surrounding you, right, left, above, in front, behind, on a big screen. This is a movie theater movie if there ever was one. This is not about being my favorite movie of all time. It's not. This is not Goodfellas. It's not Heat. It's not Shawshank Redemption. Movies like that are masterpieces in terms of directing, writing, story, and acting. Godzilla King of Monsters is a masterpiece in its own right, but as a home theater experience. I literally remember sitting back and just saying, wow, visually Godzilla and the other monsters battling on that huge screen, audio wise, hearing all the speakers in action, and then the movie itself is just a fun ride. All that together for me makes it my number one home theater movie. So just a little love to my favorite home theater movie. Like I said, it's a few months old, but still in line with my thoughts now. Take a look at my top 10 home theater movie list. You can definitely disagree, but it was fun to do. May give you some insight into me, and maybe some folks will find a new watch from that list. I thought about doing a review of my long-term experience with the Sony XW5000ES. I thought that might be helpful for some folks, maybe a six-month review. I'm a bit on the fence a little for that one, mainly because I've commented on it so much already. I did an unboxing with my initial impression, then a full review of my thoughts and comparing it to my previous projector. I thought it was pretty thorough. Another video review might be a bit redundant because my impressions really haven't changed at all. My thoughts from that review video are still the same. It's a fantastic projector. I still love it. The comments and questions that I've gotten the most are around my settings and the black level performance. 
I'll address the black level performance first. And let me say before I answer that, I'm going to give you my personal thoughts. I don't base my opinions at all on anyone else's reviews or what the popular consensus is, what everyone else is saying. I am happy to stand alone with my views, thoughts, and opinions if that's the case. I want to make sure that I'm being honest and candid with you all. Dark scene performance is generally pretty good. There have been occasional tough scenes that if I'm being honest were a challenge but those same scenes are a challenge for whatever display and my time which is now approaching six months if I'm correct with this projector I just haven't run into many scenes like that I could probably make some tweaks to the settings to raise the floor and bump up the brightness a bit but I'm so dialed into the picture quality already that I don't have any plans to make any more tweaks to the setting so to summarize dark scene performance could be better but it's fine and the overall picture quality is so good that it was just a keeper for me so as for my settings this was another ask um, it has not been professionally calibrated it's pretty close to the out of the box settings I made a few tweaks to the bright cinema mode but nothing major I set motion to low smooth uh, that's just how I like it. And for picture modes, it really depends on whatever I'm watching and my mood. Uh, bright cinema mode really just makes it look like really like a massive TV. It looks really good and it gets plenty bright. I'm usually in that mode when I'm watching sports or streaming a show and sometimes movies, but it really depends on the movie. Cinema, film one, two, and reference modes I usually use when I play a physical disc. And it really just depends on how that particular show or movie looks in whatever mode. So the other picture modes I pretty much never use. As for my recent watches, All Quiet on the Western Front on Netflix. Uh, this was a really good one from an audio video perspective, really high level of production here. It's everything you might expect from a war movie, definitely a home theater watch. It looks and sounds so good on Netflix that I'm pretty curious how much better the 4K release is because streaming through Netflix was fantastic. Next up was uh, Shadow and Bone. My daughter and I watched that. She read the books and loved those. We saw the first season when it aired. Now we're currently watching the second season. From an audio video perspective, it's actually pretty good. The audio in particular, I noticed being okay. The story for me and some of the acting was a bit rough. My daughter, she felt the same. Not especially good, but there's just enough there to keep her watching. And I'm only watching really because she's watching. So Beef on Netflix, one of my favorite recent watches. Nothing there that wowed me from a home theater perspective. And that's fine. That's not what this show is. It's a dark drama slash comedy with absolutely top notch acting, a perfect cast and really a good story with some twists. Night Agent, not something that I felt uh, needed to be watched in home theater, but my wife and I did bench watch this. She liked it a lot. I didn't as much. Uh, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. It reminded me a lot of Jack Ryan, the Jack Ryan series on Amazon, but not really that good. Succession, an excellent show. Not exactly uh, something that needs to be watched in a home theater either, but this was another one that my wife and I watch in here. Nothing special in terms of audio and video, but we like watching it in the theater. And I'll be completely honest with you all. I watched some of Love is Blind in my home theater with my wife. This show is wild and I'm into it. Obviously, it's not something that needs to be watched in the home theater to enjoy, but it's actually super bright and super colorful and really clear. Uh, and my wife and I, we just we just had fun watching the latest seasons. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about movies that, in my opinion, for me, uh, I, I need a 4K release and I think will look good in a home theater. Uh, first up, it's going to be Big Trouble in Little China. This was a childhood favorite. It's funny. It's got great characters. It's got a fun story with all the action, the effects, the score, the visuals done the right way. This could be something special on a remastered 4K release. The Wolfman 2010. I really like this movie. It has a darker visual tone that I think HDR could help with deepen those blacks and help those uh, bright highlights really pop. World War Z, 
I like a good zombie movie. This was a pretty good one. A 4K release that cleaned up the picture a bit and improved on audio would really make this a good home theater watch. The Rock and Con Air, two late 90s classic action movies. I am shocked that these have not gotten a 4K release yet. I'm hoping we get one soon. They could be something special. Gravity, I love this movie. I have the standard Blu-ray. It looks good. I'd love to see this in 4K with HDR and a Dolby Atmos mix. Those highlights with that deep black space, those explosions and those little sounds all around, I think a 4K release would be something special. The Abyss, this is another one that could be really special with a remastered 4K release. Those underwater visuals would look incredible. And the audio, there's so much potential for not just something good, but really something epic in this movie in terms of a home theater watch. Twister, another one that absolutely needs a 4K release. I can only imagine the visual of the cleaner, sharper shots in 4K and HDR for this movie. And the audio mix, the potential there, hearing the tornadoes, the winds, the storm throughout the movie. And it's just really entertaining. I really like this movie, so hopefully we'll get one. And then True Lies, classic 90s action Long overdue for a 4K release. This was made for a theater, so I'm really hoping on this one. So that is it for this episode. Like I said, check out the links in the description below for some of my other videos. Please like and subscribe and stick around for some more videos. Uh, you should see a new one just about every week. So thank you again, everyone.